Welcome to the Practical Mystic Show, where we bring you simple tips and techniques from around the globe to help practical people deal with extraordinary experiences. And now, your favorite scientist, shaman, and sacred clown, and also the show's host, Janine Bolin. Welcome to the Practical Mystic Show. I'm Janine Bolin, and today we're talking about the 10 steps to abundance, how to be mindful with your money, how to lower your debt, how to increase your savings, how to become a habitual saver. So today we're talking about step six, and you don't have to do these steps in order. It's not like that. It's just these are 10 different steps that you can use to be a habitual saver of your cash. So step six, examine your use of disposable products. So basically, it comes down to what does the math say? Sometimes you just have to change your buying habits in order for you to get the best value for your money. I'm going to go through with this with an example. I had one client. Her name was Linda. She lived in New Jersey, and she used to tell me she was having difficulty figuring out where she could cut corners in her expenses without decreasing her lifestyle. Because see, that's the thing. I don't want to have you decrease your expenses to such a place that you're in a deprivation mode, because then you kind of get into a starvation and binge mode, just like with dieting, right? If you deprive drive yourself of stuff too long, then you're going to cheat and eventually you're just going to blow it out because you're not going to care at that point. And so when it comes to examining the use of disposable products in your life, make sure that you're not giving up anything in your lifestyle. And we're going to talk about how you do that inexpensively and, and it not cost you a lot of money or a lot of time. So the whole purpose of the 10 steps of abundance is to save you time and save you money. Okay. So after about two months of tracking her expenses, Linda came to me And we were looking over her worksheets that she had put together. And I asked her about her paper towel use because I noticed that there was a funny expense in one of her groceries. And so Linda would tell me that she would only buy one particular brand of paper towels. And she knew exactly how many rolls of paper towels she went through that week and all that. So I showed her that she was spending over $520 a year on paper towels alone. Now, I'm going to walk through the math, but I also have a link below where you can take my 10 Steps to Abundance course for free, and it will walk you through this math, and you can look at it visually. But she was buying four rolls of paper towels a week, and each one of those rolls of paper towels cost her $2.50 each. So at $10 a week, you got 52 weeks a year, it was costing her $520 annually for these paper towels. She absolutely stood there with her jaw hanging open as she looked at me. She was appalled. She said that, oh my gosh, you know, and she slammed her hands down on my desk and she was like, I could buy a new dishwasher for that amount of money. So this gave her the motivation to really start looking into the use of the disposable products around her. She immediately went out and purchased a bunch of inexpensive towels. And I think her initial investment was something like $12.64. She told me and she bought 20 of these linen towels. And she goes, even with the laundering cost, you know, she'd just throw the towels in with the rest of the laundry. It wasn't like it was uh, increasing her time. She was saving huge amounts amounts of money and she didn't use paper towels anymore. Now I had one other client, Shirley, who told me a lot about how by reading this in one of my books, by reading this tip, she still keeps paper towels around for when grease happens. Like, you know, when she has it, she has a deep fat fryer she used. And when grease happens, she just mops it up with paper towels first. But then she also has a composting service where she is. And so she doesn't feel bad about those paper towels just going into a landfill. She actually has a composting service. So kind of look at your lifestyle and Look at the way that you're using your disposable products. Now, let's just take a critical eye at this. Look around your house and determine what behaviors you have when it comes to disposable products. See them for what they really are. They truly are money going down the drain. Now, in certain respects, that disposable product really is saving you time, money, and energy, and there are ways to reduce or reuse, but at some point, don't let these commercials fool you with those disposable products. They talk about how convenient they are, and I can assure you that they're not as convenient as being financially independent, and that anytime I have a disposable product, I see myself throwing money down the drain. So I usually try to find a non disposable way to overcome it that doesn't increase my time, right? So let's just talk about some of the disposable products that you have in a normal household. You know, as I run you through this list, just see which ones you can really do without and which ones that you can make it a goal to eliminate. 
from your household budget or that you can find a non-disposable alternative. Remember that the frugal life is all about saving money in places that won't make you feel deprived, okay? So paper towels, that's a given. You buy the kitchen towels, you store a whole stack of those under your sink for daily use. If you have a lot of young children, I make sure that the towels are easily accessible to them so that if they make a spill or something, they get into the habit of using that towel. And then I talk to them about, take that towel and put it in the washing machine and all that. And so my children have learned from very early on how to do their own laundry because it was something that I could teach them very young and I could use a step stool so that they could learn how to turn on the washing machines and all that. As a parent, I ask you to use common sense. You know which children you can trust to do certain things with. You know how to raise your children effectively. So, you know, use your common sense on this. The other one is napkins. I was always fascinated in other cultures, there's not the use of napkins that I see in American culture. I was raised in Japan. I was also raised in the Bahamas. And there were different ways of handling spills and that sort of thing. But when I got to the Midwest, napkins were everywhere, especially like on picnics and stuff like that. So that was something that always I was surprised by. My children grew up using cloth napkins. We had the napkins that were nice for company. So if we had company come over, we'd break out the nice napkins. But then we also had the napkins that we'd just throw in the washing machine. And I didn't worry about stains or stuff on that because, you know, I was teaching my children how to save money through the use of napkins that were made of cloth and not paper. The other one is plastic flatware. I am amazed at the number of events that are held where flatware, plastic flatware is used What I'd like you to do is buy a bunch of flatware from a thrift store. I mean, you can get this stuff for pennies and it washes up just fine. And you take that with you on outings and picnics and to your potlucks or whatever events you're having. And then, you know, if this stuff gets lost or stolen, hey, no biggie. You know, you went to a thrift store, you paid pennies, you know, for this stuff. The other one that surprised me was the amount of disposable cups and paper cups that were used. Again, go to a thrift store. (laughs) They have a treasure trove of coffee mugs, unwanted teacups, and glassware that you can buy for 10 15 cents. When we went out on our last picnic, what we did is we took all our drinking dishes. I use uh, coffee mugs because they don't break as easily as some of the glassware. And what was fun was we just wrapped up all of our cups in our cloth napkins and pack them carefully for the last event that we went to. We got them all out and nothing broke. Also, I find that young children don't drop or spill the coffee mugs or the tea mugs like they do the plastic cups because it's not so light that their little hands, you know, knock it over. So I haven't had nearly as much trouble or breakage when it comes to coffee mugs using those for my children. The other thing that's a fun aspect is that In my family, everybody goes to the thrift store and everybody gets to buy their mug. And so there's a lot less washing that goes on because everybody knows whose cup is whose because we get these very distinctive coffee mugs. So these are just ideas on ways to overcome the paper and the plastic that is being used and is disposable. Now, when you go to the pool, of course, you cannot take glassware around there. That's a safety issue. So if you have safety issues, yeah, by all means, use paper cups or find reusable plastic items that you can use for safety reasons. But for the most part, I think you kind of get the idea. It is an adventure for your entire family to go to the thrift store and everybody pick out their specific mug that you can use. My kids used to love it. And then if they broke their mug, there weren't tears over it or anything like that. They knew they got to go to the thrift store again and get a different mug. It was really no difficulty for that. So these are just fun things that you can do when it comes to disposable products. Now, the other one I want to talk about are those special cleaning wands, the sweepers, and the other household cleaning disposable products. Now, I tried the brand new Clean All Dust Mop thingy. I don't want to mention any product names, but when it first came out, because I was a blogger and they were allowing me to try it with a double coupon day, and I think instead of the item that's one of those special wand mop thingies that you can use, instead of it costing $20, it only cost me $5 because of the, you know, they were wanting me to review the product for my blog. I could write it off as a business expense since I was testing it for my readers. Well, just wanted to let you know that little wand thingy did not clean as well as my dust mop that I had that had a removable cotton head that I could throw into my washing machine. Actually, it left a lot of stuff behind that my dust mop did not leave behind. So really look at your household cleaning products. How many of them are languishing in the back of your closet that you never used because you realized that your broom did a better job and didn't cost you pennies a day to use it. So I recommend that you go through your household cleaning products and goods and then look in 
your town for a cleaning service and ask them where they buy their products. It's amazing to me that so many of the folks that clean for a living, the professional cleaners, they know exactly where you can go to get discounted cleaning products that serve better because they're they're made for people who are professional cleaners. And many of the times I've, I've talked to them and I've said, hey, where do you go and get your products? And then they're the ones that tell me what work and doesn't work. And they were the ones that got me to the cotton mop heads and they told me which ones were the better quality that you could wash 10, 15, 20 times before you had to buy a new, you know, mopping head. So what you'll find is that a lot of the disposable products that you're using, when you start cutting down the use of that, you will save yourself. It can be up to hundreds of dollars a month. I've heard some of my clients tell me, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much money I was spending on disposable products. So the last one that I want to talk about is trash bags. Now, when we moved into our current house, I went to the thrift store and I bought all the trash cans as bathroom size trash cans for various rooms of the house. The size was the tiny, tiny ones, the bathroom size. I even used that for our one in the kitchen. And what I did was I used the plastic bags that I was getting at the store for store liners. Now, sure, I used the canvas bags for shopping, but when my trash bag liners got low, I would use those little freebie bags. Now, that was back in the 1990s that I was doing that. Now we have a big go green movement that's happening and there's been a lot of talk about just how much plastic is floating around. And I started learning about this back in 2005. And so I did start changing up what I did. Also, we have an amazing recycling program here in Colorado. So I saw that I could get a curbside trash can that's half the size of what you normally see. No lie. There's, I have pictures on my blog and stuff about how small this thing is. Also, you can compost and you also have a recycling program. So we actually have three trash bins that sit out when we use our various trash recycling programs. One of the things I just wanted to talk about is if you can find ways to use alternative trash systems, it's great. But I also know that many of you who listen to this program, some of you live in rather remote areas and you have to burn your trash because that's really all you have. You don't have a dump, you don't have a bin system, and you have to worry about livestock getting into your trash. So as you look at the amount of plastic that is moving through your life, you may want to rethink that. I know from my folks who are in Canada, you folks are very good about making sure you really decrease your plastic use. And I want to say thank you for educating me on some of the things that the different provinces do up in Canada to decrease the amount of plastic on the planet. So just be aware as you continue to do little things every day to keep your life simple and frugal. Give up the things you can buy generic when you can, and then purchase items that make a difference in your life. Don't feel guilty here. Be conscious of what you're buying and how much life energy it costs you to make the money to buy whatever the product is. But I don't want you to fall into guilt or shame about anything that you purchase. If you're buying something and it truly lifts you up and makes you feel better, then stick with that. Save money in some other area. One of my favorite authors on how to be frugal is Amy Decision. And she wrote a series of books called The Tightwad Gazette. And she says something very profound, even though it's quite evident. And that is this. She says, there are only one or two ways to save huge amounts of money all at once. But there are thousands upon thousands of ways to save cents and dollars here and there and everywhere. So be creative in a way that allows you to live the life you want to in abundance, feeling good about what you're doing. Don't feel guilty. And then scrimp and save in areas where you're not too passionate about what type of paper towels you use, knowing that the money you're saving is going to help you buy that dishwasher that you know you need or whatever your thing is. Just realize that there are thousands upon thousands of ways to save pennies a day. And it's not through the use of disposable products. All right, we'll see you in the next episode where we'll be talking about the positive purposes for the use of the law of cause and effect. And that'll be step seven. Otherwise, in the show notes, take a look and go ahead and visit my website and sign up for the 10 Steps to Abundance program for free. See you in the next episode. This has been the Practical Mystic Show with Janine Bolin. For show notes, resources, and more, visit the8gates.com. Thanks for listening.